SCO Frameshift Drive technology has dramatically altered the meta for travel across all fields and careers in Elite Dangerous. This review will cover the dynamics behind SCO Drive performance and how it is affected by module size or grade changes. SCO drives function much the same as previous Sirius Corporation drives, but offer a higher optimized mass. This advantage means that these drives are superior to their Sirius Corporation alternatives, even before accounting for their overcharge capabilities, which require that drives be sized at the maximum level supported by the ship they are attached to. SCO drives are capable of entering an overcharged mode that allows these drives to accelerate rapidly. While in overcharge, SCO drives consume a tremendous amount of fuel, produce large volumes of heat, and create significant control interference. These factors make long jumps in overcharge mode dangerous and impractical, both for the threat of overheat and for the risk of expending fuel reserves. Ships with large fuel reserves, compared to the size of their hyperdrive bay, have the greatest advantage for sustaining longer jumps, though significant attention must be paid to heat management during a jump. SCO drive failure while in overcharge, whether from overheat, malfunction, or loss of fuel, results in more significant hull and module damage than is created during an emergency drop. SCO drive performance is affected by module size and grade, with smaller drives able to reach higher performance thresholds than larger ones. SCO performance is defined by four unique metrics. SCO max speed increase. This value increases the maximum achievable speed by the percentage indicated compared to that drive's normal top speed under gravitational conditions. SCO drives are still inhibited by gravity wells while in overcharge, so this value grows the farther away from a gravitational source that a ship gets. Reaching this speed requires an extended jump, and is usually not attained during normal operation. SCO max speed increase scales down as drive size goes up. A smaller D-rated drive is faster than a larger A-rated one. SCO max speed scales up with module grade. E-rated modules offer the lowest max speed for their size. D, C, and B-rated modules have the same max speed, and A-rated modules offer the highest speed for their size. SCO max acceleration rate. This figure controls how quickly that maximum speed can be achieved. It allows for greater distance to be covered in less time. This figure scales down as drive size increases, and is not affected by module grade. SCO Heat Generation Rate This value determines the total heat load created during an overcharge. This load is constant while overcharge is on, and varies between different module grades. E-rated modules generate the most heat. A-rated ones generate the second most heat. D and B-rated modules generate the third most heat. And C-rated modules generate the least heat. SCO Control Interference this value determines the amount of random interference generated while in overcharge mode. It works a lot like jitter. Higher values increase the amount of drift off the center of your control. This figure varies between drive grades. A-rated drives create the least interference. D, C, and B-rated drives generate the same interference. E-rated drives create the most interference. Module integrity, power draw, optimized mass, high wake thermal load, and max fuel per jump do not change between D, C, and B grades across all module sizes. Module mass does not change across E, C, B, and A variants, with the D-rated variant remaining the lightest. 
Module boot time is unaffected across all sizes and grades and is fixed at 10 seconds. All SCO drives are now compatible with engineering, but at the time of writing, there are no engineering blueprints that alter overcharge mode performance. This may change in the future. Note that the Python Mark II provides unique performance metrics due to its design, which serve to break normal performance rules. The exact figures are a bit harder to determine, as they don't appear to be reflected in module data. I suspect these figures are attached to the hull as some kind of special ability. If anyone can confirm these figures, let me know in the comments. Intra-system travel is the most significant improvement facilitated by SCO and is also the most accessible. Jumps lasting a few seconds are sufficient to cover several thousand light seconds, even within the influence of stellar gravity wells. This means travel times to stations at inconvenient distances between 1,000 and 25,000 light seconds can now be completed in a few minutes, as opposed to 10 or more. Traveling between the stars of binary systems is one of the most time-intensive activities in the game, with the Hutton orbital run being the most common example. Over an hour of non-stop flight to the most remote outpost in the game. Unfortunately, this distance is far too great for any ship to cover in a single SCO cycle though I imagine this feat will be highly sought after going forward. It's possible advancements in this technology will eventually enable single-jump transits, but we aren't there yet. This does not mean that the SCO drive is useless for deep space travel, only that it requires commanders to be more strategic about when and where they choose to use it. Overcharging allows a ship to power out of deep stellar gravity wells, achieving high supercruise speeds far sooner than would otherwise be possible, and greatly shortening their overall travel time. New records have already been set for the Hutton orbital trade route, landing close to 30 minutes. Ships with large enough fuel reserves can execute multiple short jumps along the way, affecting significant benefit without needing to overheat. SCO technology offers a significant advantage to smaller ships, which have higher top speeds and acceleration compared to larger ones. This dynamic means that traders and smugglers who are willing to run compact vessels have a much higher chance of reaching their destination ports, or of escaping an attack before it begins. Larger ships still gain a massive increase to their response and transit times, allowing combat operations to reach and return from distant targets more quickly, though they remain at a disadvantage when maneuvering against smaller ships, which can force or escape confrontation at their discretion. These factors only apply to supercruise travel. Smaller ships will likely require a numbers advantage to successfully kill a medium or large target in normal space. SCO drives are the better solution overall for ships considering a refit, as they offer greater stock performance compared to their older counterparts. Engineering further increases this performance gap, which has contributed directly to the abandonment of the older serious frameshift drives across the build spectrum. This has tended to create storage issues for older players who have entire fleets engineered around the older serious drives. Performance increases are so great that even the Tech Broker and CG Reward drives released over the past few years perform slightly worse when compared against fully engineered SEO equivalents. Explorers of all kinds should take note, as they can gain increased jump performance in addition to overcharge capabilities by switching to the new technology, a fact that is sure to bring many a seasoned explorer in from the far reaches for an upgrade. Further advancements in this technology are expected over time, though what form these advancements take is yet to be fully explored. It has been implied that future ships will take SCO technology into account in their designs, and that enhanced SCO performance may be a driving force behind encouraging commanders to purchase them. That's all I have for today. Catch you all later.